doing well, you want to protect your legacy. So it's gonna you're gonna have to get to the experts for that. And just being honest. Yep. Financial education, like she said, educate yourself. Um, surround yourself with the right people. All right. A lot of times we surround ourselves with the wrong people that are takers. You know, instead of givers. Instead, you, you know, you got to make sure you have the right people on your team in your corner that's going to try to see you elevate and not just take so they can elevate around you. Um, find the right type of financial advisor that's going to advise you where to put your money in, what to put what to put your money into. You know, um, I know a lot of us we want to put our money into jewelry, into rims and cars. There's nothing wrong with that. that. That's what you do. Do what you do. But if you're talking about generational wealth, then you got to put it in the right type of things that's going to make you money, make money. So all you got to do is sit back and live off the interest of it. You know, buy you some land. You know, my, my wife is my financial advisor because she's always advising me. If you don't love it, don't don't spend money on it. You know, real talk. So when when you when you start getting that real money, you know what? Don't even start with the real money. Start with a little bit of money now, because you got to discipline yourself. You know, you got you got fifty dollars. Take ten, twenty dollars. Put it to a savings. Let it sit. Don't touch it. You know, and let it grow. And when the real money start coming in, and you follow those same principles. You'll see your, your money increase. You'll see your net worth go up. You know, and then you surround yourself as you grow, you surround yourself with the right type of people. And I'm here to tell you now, if you have the wrong people on your team, I don't care how long y'all been down, right. you gotta be willing to cut them off. Because yes. if you don't, they're gonna become a ball of change to you. Right. And they're gonna weigh you down. Right. You know, I started out when I when I came down from DC, I started out in the game, I was a DJ. I was a DJ for 12 years. You made that song done, but <clears throat> I produced that. Me and him fell out after he went behind my back and signed a, a, a separate contract with the record deal, with the record label, Scotty Brothers Records out of California. So when I branched off of him, me and three other guys formed a group of Southern Players. We made the song Dicky Ride. You know, we got our, our, our first deal with Critique Records, then we moved over to LaFace Records. Yeah, that's it. That's all with Platinum. Now we had the wrong people on our team that was skip, skipping money off the top. You know, the record label put so much money into us, we didn't understand the business at the time. So when they recouped that money off tops, we were wondering why our royalty checks were only like $10,000 every quarter. Why was it more money? Because this song went platinum and it's still moving to this day. Then we didn't have any control over it. The licensing fees, we weren't getting what it was being licensed for movies and other, other jingles and commercials. And attorney's fees too, pay attention to that as well. Yes. They'll have an attorney for you and that attorney will be charging $500 an hour and you didn't approve that attorney. So you want to make sure you be a part of all of that as well. They list an attorney and saying this is how much. Yep. You actually, they're going to take that from you yep. as part of your expenses when you get your um, your, your, your statement. statement. When you so get your you, statement and your statement is this long, <laughs> and you're like, what is this fee? What is that fee? Hotel fee, limousine fee. You stand up in five star hotels, and you, you know when you when they put you in the hotels, oh, you're like, yeah, this is bomb. You're you know, paying you, for it. Though. Yeah, you coming out, your fan base is out there, and they, oh my god, I have autographs. But when you get that statement. And it's saying deducted, deducted, deducted. And at the bottom when it says, when, by the time it gets to where you get your money, nothing. And now you're mad at the record label, but you gotta be mad at yourself. Because some of that stuff you don't have to have. I know we wanna have it, we see the videos, these big big name artists, they riding like this. Let me tell you something, I learned this. <laughs> these videos that you see a lot of, maybe not today, but before, back in the day, these videos where you see with these fat chains, these fly rides and all this and that, a lot of that stuff was rented. You know? It's fake now. Fake now they mm -hmm. go to clear the ice and buy it and they hear it. <laughs> Look the same. <laughs> uh, it's just like what she said. How do you really like tell the label you don't need those things? Because I had a, I had a friend that actually like, was dealing with an uh, industry label and they was putting him in hotels and stuff, but they never actually said, this is coming out your pocket. They was like, hey, this is what I got for you. Look what I'm going to do for you, this and that. <laughs> And and he on the day, when he dropped his album, he was looking for his money. Like you said, that statement came out. He yep. was like, I didn't even know I had to pay for this yep. and that and this Can and that. Can I say something? The same way y'all would go to Walmart and say, I'm not about to pay for that, because that's not what I want. Y'all do the same thing with your contracts. We yep. do it in our daily lives, but when it comes to our business lives, we want to shy away from doing it. Yep. But the best thing, I will tell you this, write the vision and make the plan, write everything down. Same thing with your finances, write everything down so that you see it in black and white and you see it from a different perspective versus what's in your head and you'll be able to follow your plans through the way you need to. There's a certain thing called a writer, an artist writer. You know what that is? It's, it's where you you write out, like she was saying, where you write out what you want like for performances and shows and if you, even if you go on tour. 
right out of a writer of what you want. I don't want the five star hotels. I don't want a Motel 6 either, but I'll take a, a, a Hampton Inn. You know, write out what you want in your dress room, and then you have that writer, that way you can send it for it. You can go sit down and talk to your CEOs, your record labels, and you can tell them beforehand, I don't need all that. I know you gotta recoup this money off tops when it comes to royalty times, so I don't need all that. You know, I don't need a van, I don't need a bus. Depends on how, how large you are, right. you know. But starting off, keep it simple, keep it plain. You know what I mean? That's gonna save you a lot of heartache, a lot of money. And basically like this is, do as much as you can for yourself before you even go to ask money. No, I ain't say ask for nothing. Even just no, was already saying, like presented like, to them. Like, 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 like they were gonna do it for them already. Get that by yourself, get that by yourself. I'll just say this, the words that they use are like, like you said, oh, we're getting this for you. They don't, mm -hmm. your job is to know that before you even get to that yeah. point. Okay, understand that whatever you do and whatever they're giving you, you're still going to pay for it. It may not be coming out your pocket up front, but you will come, you will be paying for it. So you want to have a say in that. You, you have a say in your groceries, so you want to have a say in what you're spending when it comes to your, your music business as well. Right. Definitely want to have a say in that. I'm going to, uh, because it sounds like we get in a discussion that I get into all the time, when we talk about artists and labels, because it's really like a love-hate relationship. Be honest. I'm gonna give you, as a label owner, I'm gonna tell you what the real, the, the sole purpose of what a label is supposed to do. Anything outside of what I'm gonna tell you, it is not beneficial. A label is an enhancer for your career. It's not supposed to be a, a maker or a breaker. It's supposed to be an enhancer. Okay, for example, I can tell you like this. We'll take my artist wholehearted, for example. I never met wholehearted until the day I signed him. That was the first time I met him. I found him off a music review. A lot of people didn't know me as a CEO, a lot of people didn't know he even rapped. We grew together, but it took me as a CEO to enhance him as an artist. What I mean by that is, when you saw me, I was part of a group at that time, but when you saw me and my partner interviewing, you saw him in the room too. He was already being introduced and later he was formally introduced, but they were familiar when we put him in the room. His first flight was with me here. His first flight, him and his mama went to Vegas with us to an award show. You know what I'm saying? We ride limousines. I didn't charge him for none of that. I'm building something. Right. Labor ate that bill. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Labor ate that bill. We got American Express cars. We good. We got business accounts. But I was building. When we did introduce him to the world, he was already kind of familiar with the interview process. Already kind of familiar with the, you know, what to say in magazines, things of that nature. He had his own vision. I had to enhance that. So it was certain things he wanted to do, and I'd be like, no, nah, bro, I don't think we need to do that. You know what I'm saying? I had to be the, the no man sometimes, but then sometimes I had to be the, what you think about this idea? Right. If he agrees, see, he got his creative control. I never take creative control from my artist. I let him keep it. I want you to be as true to your brand, your vision as you are. My job as a CEO and as a record label, or the record label, to enhance your vision. If your label can't enhance your vision, every artist that's with me got their own vision. Breezy came to me with his vision. Trey Bench came to me with his vision. They all got their own thing. I don't put them in a pot to try to mix it. Everybody got their own vision. So when I sit down and talk to them individually, keep in mind, we have label meetings, but we also have one-on-one -on -one meetings. That's that part right there that some miss out on is the one-on-one -on -one meetings where yeah. you collaborate with the label. Y'all, you discuss your vision and then they help enhance it. Yeah, so it's to enhance you. But I am a different type of CEO too. Cause I serve as a booking agent, travel agent. You know what I'm saying? I do it all. My art, a lot of my artists don't have managers. But like I tell them, until you find somebody who can outwork me, why you need one? I'm investing and I'm putting you where you need to be. When me and Breezy went to North Carolina, they didn't pay for no rental cars, they didn't pay for no rooms, they didn't pay for no flights. It was funny watching Breeze on the first flight, man. We, man, we wild out. <laughs> the stories that I can tell y'all was traveling with these guys, but I put whole heart on his first tour. It went on tour with the 1017 Artists of Chanton last year. That didn't come out of their pocket. When we went places, they either met us or we, we got together in the car, we rode together. I'm having my hands on CEO. Q from QC, I ain't finna do that with little baby them. They got people around them for that. When you independent, we together. Like I tell them sometimes, look bro, we flew in, we ain't got no guns, some shit go love it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna keep it on. I'm one of them. And look, if, if we driving, hey look, we know we got
got the AR in the back, we got the 40 right here. <laughs> Look, get crazy if you want to, shit, go low. But I'm one of them type. When they call my team, is them my guys. Like, I talk to people's mothers. I had one of my artists sign me a long time ago, I had to help him bury his mama. Until you go through things like that with artists, I'm a different type of CEO for a reason. To this day, that's still my best friend. You know, his mama dead 10 years now. I actually got arrested the night, the night before the funeral, long story, but anyway. But uh, <laughs> whole heart, I went through a car wreck. I, went, I had to go through him losing his daddy. I had to go through him losing his son. And you know what I'm saying? I've been, people don't understand, like he, he took a picture from the video you shot last night. And it was just me embracing him. And he put Frankens, Frankenstein and his creator. Yeah, the monster. Y'all ain't put on the Frankenstein. Yeah, and the monster he created. And and in a sense, if you think about it, I felt that. Yeah, I felt it. You know what I'm saying? But when you go for some with people like that, people can holler business all day. I had a manager try to see you and say you need your own manager because the label don't have your best interests at heart. Let me tell you something. When you get a phone call from your artist mama telling him you finna sign one of the biggest deals of your life, but you put that to the side because she told you your artist lost his daddy, it's deeper than music, and a lot of people don't understand that. I ain't, what you ain't gonna find one of me, I promise you, I don't give a damn who you go to, you ain't gonna get what you get from me from 98% of the game. Cause I put emotion into what I do in the realness. If, it, if it's dumb, I'ma check you. If I do something dumb, even though I'm a CEO, I expect you to check me. I'm real enough to say it. A lot of people can't handle that. A lot of people will use their position to keep the humble you and keep you down. At the end of the day, y'all, I'm here and I'm losing money right now. I'm gonna keep on with it. But to give y'all knowledge, that's some money can't buy. So for me, that's a bigger reward than any amount of money I can make in a day's prices. And then y'all my partners. Like y'all my partners, man. You know what I'm saying? We could have that conversation on the way back to Atlanta or something. But to show y'all in this room, it showed me that y'all are serious about what you're doing here. Y'all beat me up, most of y'all. So, you know, that's a good look. Then Deanna cooking and stuff. And you know, I'm sorry for early, by the way. I just want to let you know that, you know, publicly. <laughs> I just got to say something, because I mentioned this. All the, all the, all, who's all his artists in here? Y'all are bomb as hell. You understand me? I was, look, I was, last night I was like, okay, just one more song. They could, no, they can keep going. Y'all are really, really good. And it shows that y'all actually put a lot of work in and that y'all work together. That you, from the performances to how they interact, y'all are dope. Oh, yeah. I think y'all was really all dope. I just had to say that. I, I think I'm about to, you know, I'm about to give him my demo tape. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if I can't rap, I'll stand on the stage and do the run, running. So, you know, just let me be a part of the team. But no, but you, it, it, it's, it's real when you come to the thing, you have things like this, and this is free. This is free right here. Do you know how many people passed up not coming here, and it's free, but they'll go pay $2,000 to go sit in the seminar. It's crazy. Yeah. So that just that lets you know how people's perceptive, perception is and everything. Um, I do, I want to I get back to one thing. Um, and that, that is, you know, what's very important is you as a brand. Yeah. 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 Right, right. You, you're in the public eye at all times. You know, people look for, for reasons to, 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 to take that away from you. What I want to say is, you don't have to go out here and, and buy Gucci this, and Fendi that, and Louis this, and all that other stuff, because you're a brand. You got to stay. I, I, I remember Waka Flocka said, he said, why would I want to go to a club with some $800 pair of Louis loafers on that six other people are going to have? when I can go up the street to Pookie and Ray Ray and get my stuff specially designed and won't nobody else in the club have that. That's some real shit right there. You follow what I'm saying? So you gotta, you gotta think about that. Stop trying to be like everybody else out here and be original like they said. You know, that's something to take with you. Yep. Um, that's real talk. So as an artist, you wanna think longevity. You don't ever wanna just think, okay, I'm gonna, drop this song, drop this album, and that's it. You wanna always keep thinking steps ahead. All right, you got fire music, keep writing. Don't ever get to a point where you stop writing. You know, your ideas, keep them, keep them on the paper, how you do, however you do it on your phone, but keep it rolling. You know, because you may have a fire song, 
but always strive to make the next one better. You know, <clears throat> excuse, make it harder than that. So when you do get to that point where you should have real money coming in, like the young lady said, said, what do you do with your money when you start making it? You start thinking multiple streams of income. Spread your money out. Don't just put it back into studio time. If you got money to where you can invest into some real estate, you know, invest into some type of property, invest into your own label and an artist, if that's what you want. Yes, sir. Before you even start making much, start paying yourself not. Yeah, you always want to pay yourself. Now, don't pay yourself. <laughs> don't make $100 and pay yourself 80 Because <laughs> uh, then, then what are you putting back into your craft? <laughs> but yeah, you want to, like I said earlier, you, you got 50, put away 10, pay yourself 10. You know, if you, if you have a vision and that vision is real, it's going to cost. So whatever money you make, you want to put back, it's just like the dough game, hopefully. <laughs> is it just me? Is it me? It's okay. Yeah, y'all don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta check that wire. Yeah. Anybody in the police? Yeah. You gotta re-up. You know, you gotta reinvest into your product. You are your product. Okay, she looking like, oh my God, he's my dope. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you got you had a question? Oh yeah, I did. I don't know if like anybody can answer it, but at what point do the investments that we're putting into ourselves like we are essentially in the business and if we have our business legitimately done, what are the tax write offs? Oh yeah, <laughs> man. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this. Everything you do is a tax write-off. My hotel room, tax write-off. Yes. Your rental car, tax write-off. Real, real quick, say, but there are stipulations. There's limits, so make sure they just updated the IRS tax code. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. In 2021, and then again in um, 20. Get your personal January tax this year. prepare. Yeah. So definitely, I used to do that. I used to have my own tax preparation company. Mm -hmm. I'm a certified financial education instructor as well, so I can I go around teaching uh, financial literacy and everything for all the questions that you don't ask. I know I have my master's in business. I have a lot. Right. <laughs> I had a PT, but I will say this. Lady. We do a question real quick. Um, for those who are local, local. There's a great financial analyst that's, uh, she's an accountant and financial uh, advisor in this building alone. There's a lot of gyms in this building. Yeah. Her name is Valencia. She's an accountant for artists like Kelly Richardson, King George, Kim. I mean, she got quite a few on her belt. And she's she, she works for the top accounting agency in the world. And she's the one that's responsible for getting, making sure the government is in line, the federal government. So she does very good if you want to get, um, If you want to uh, really get some information on what you like, what you the question you just asked, or uh, what she she firsthand, her yeah, she got a a, a, a whole um, conglomerate of information that she can give you to to help you with that. I will say this: when you go to these experts, follow your transparency. Don't be embarrassed about how you're spending your funds and everything. You have to be very transparent in order for it to work. You can't be lying to yourself and them. Otherwise, it won't work. So you're, in, you're in the strip club making it rain, you're going to spend 100000 in the strip club. You can be honest, put it on there. <laughs> but definitely get you an expert. When you get to that point with everything, it's not a deflection. How are you an expert? Someone who does this every day. This is how they make their living. Yep. So they're gonna make sure you're right. Don't, don't, don't get your cousin them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. I'm gonna say this too, though, for anybody who's starting a business. Just because you start a business, don't mean you gonna always make money when you start it. If you're an artist in here, you already know. I didn't see. I didn't get out of the black with Rufus Killers until after the pandemic. Out of the red. I'm sorry. That took me, I started in 2018, so we're talking 2021. Generally, it's about three years old. They say you can, especially what you can claim when the IRS is talking about yeah. taxes, three, your first three years of your business, you can claim a loss on it. Yeah. So that's, a, that's kind of like the rule of thumb, three yeah. years. By yeah. then, you want to be make, make, being a black versus staying in the red. 
Yeah. No. And, I, and actually, I'm going to tell y'all the key to how I got out of the red. I got with, I got with Chipper Jones one day. I went to a seminar. Chipper Jones, he was there. And um, I just had a chance to speak with him. And he was getting ready to have a baby at the time or something like that. And he got a bunch of kids. They're all like all boys, too. Like, I was like, damn, I'm not young girl. <laughs> but he was telling me he got to talk about money, and I'm, I'm telling him, like, yo, well, I do music, I don't play baseball, you know, boo. He said, business is all one and the same. You know what I'm saying? And one thing he told me, I didn't stress business credit until I talked with him. That's how I got out the red. Once he started letting me understand, like, people started wondering, well, damn, why did you get so many record label pieces now? Everybody on my team got record label pieces. I was financing them through the company paying them off, but I'm building business credit. I went from a Capital One gold card, then I got American Express gold, now I'm working on platinum. But once I got business credit, you just take that business credit and let that turn into cash. So I start paying for certain things, throw a show, show make money, you pay that off, take the profit, put it in the bank account. I just use credit to make money. Once I figured out the formula, I always tell stress people, look man, business credit, not your personal credit, business credit. <clears throat> I, it starts with how I started mine. I did start with my personal. I took my EIN, started on the company, but because it didn't have no credit, I had to use my personal first. Once I started establishing, you know, I had our Avis rental car things, I got the first credit card, Rent it through the uh, credit card, pay it off. You get your uh, Dunn's number. Your Dunn's number is how they keep up with your business transactions. So your business bank account, all that stuff, all that reports back to your Dunn's number. Your credit cards, pay it off, good standing, report to your Dunn's number. The score on your Dunn's number is what dictates your business credit score. So when I start, you know, my credit start going up. So I, first I start out like 800. Then I wound up getting like 15, then they bumped me up to like 7,000. It's just jewelry though. So like, when they start time to get wet bands and stuff, I'm in that one going crazy. Then I got big discounts from my jeweler, I'm plugged in. So we get them, how I was doing it, I was paying everything off in 90 days though. So I didn't get it, just pay it right off. You gotta let it sit a little bit. Right before the interest hit, day 89, say you owe 4,000. $4,000 paid off. So now I paid it with the credit card. So now the balance on the credit cards, so I double paid myself. Then you take the money cash that you made from the profit, pay the credit card off. So not only did I pay off the jewelry, I put it on the credit card, then I paid the credit card off. So I'm doubling up on one move. So you mean to tell me I can have bad credit on my standings and have an EIN number and I can still get this? Yes. 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 And, your, and, and, and Jack put me on that too. And Jack told me his business credit saved his personal credit. Yes, you can do that. Like what he was saying, like we're renting vehicles and stuff and putting oh, it in your company's name. Same thing, like with trade lines, depending on what you've been, different things, trade lines, different kind of called the net 30s and net 90s and things of that nature, that you use that to establish your business credit. So Duns and Sprint, Bat, Brashery, and then your pay next score is what they be paying attention to now nowadays. But you can do all that, but you have to be registered properly. Everything has to be registered properly. So it all goes down to the paperwork. So what's the biggest killer to an artist's career? What's the biggest killer to an artist's career? Lack of education. Lack of knowledge about the business. Because you can have sales, you know, you can have marketing, you can have branding. It won't be coming from you. Because if you have a lack of understanding, lack of knowledge, education about it, guess who's getting the revenue from it? If you don't know the business, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get stuck, okay? You can get on stage and you can get performance money all day long, but if you're not getting royalties, they merchandise and you got merchandise everywhere, but you don't have any percentage of that. They got, they wear your shirts, they got your name on there, but you're not getting any type of percentage, no type of income from that. Around or just like I said, I associate myself with that's all we're chasing really is the show money. That's right now, 
do it for yourself. Do it, lead by yeah. example. Start by doing it for yourself. And they will see that it's working for you and then they will more than likely want to do it as well. Because if you just try to do it, a lot of people are disbelieving. We're our worst enemies. Yeah. We will talk ourselves out of something quicker than anybody else can. And let somebody else say the same thing we already doing, now they're a hater. So start by doing it for yourself. Don't talk about it, be about it. And most that labels simple? have artist development. Um, bigger, larger labels have artist development right. departments. Um, you, you want no more. No, no, they got rid of the The independent scene yeah. is the artist development. Yeah, they don't do artist development. Yeah. 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 Piggybacking yeah. on how you said they don't even bother to invest in you unless you got motion. Yeah. 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 You gotta, you gotta, the you streets gotta is, yeah, yeah. the you streets is the artist game. development now, so they yeah. kind of dig in the indie circuit. When I came out, yeah. Baby just documentary just he came out this year. He, he actually went through it. So it, I think it's just something nowadays that an artist would have to like ask yeah. the label for like type thing, like just be on them about yeah. what they want because I've actually seen Lil Baby went through artist yeah. development. All labels ain't the same thing. Yeah, all ain't the same thing. Like you like see the the uh, the what them girls here, the Miami, what, oh, the city girls. The city girls, they weren't even really rappers when they first signed no, up. No, they no, developed no. them into rappers. No, and But that, that was a smart investment because we got turned out for them. Let me ask y'all this though, as artists, when do you think an artist should get paid shows? And I'm asking this from a promoter's perspective because I do both, so when I know the answer. Mixing, huh? When your streams and your royalties mix in. Now, when you got like, like, Go ahead. Yeah, hide the band. Huh? When you got people demanding to see you. Cause yeah. you have, I see, you got websites, you got websites that you can actually sign up for that uh, let you know who demanding you, what city demanding you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm signed up to all of them. Like, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm signed up to everything. When I say everything, I mean everything. I'm gonna Look tell you up. what we look for. Like, when it comes to booking an artist, cause I book major artists, I done book some of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be honest with you. This is what we look for. People don't understand showcasing me being important. Cause like at the end of the day, like for me as a head count, if I see you come in for a showcase and you got like 34 with you, you might not even win. But get what I see. Like that boy got some money behind him. Hey girl, let me holler at you real quick. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, I'm looking at it like, okay, he dope the people rocking with him. I might throw you a little something just to see. You know what I'm saying? But in order for you to really get a paid show, you gotta be in demand, but not your music, your presence. Because let me tell you something, it's a difference. You can have good music all day. People ride you in your car. But it's a different when the mother talking about, hey man, go pay that 30, come see call when he come to town. Look, just cause you in demand on the radio don't mean you in demand in person. Then you got some artists who people don't really even listen to on the radio like that. But if they throw it like, think about it. How many NBA young boy songs you hear on the radio? Think about it. None. But let him throw a show and see how many people pull up. That's real spill. You got to be, for me, you got to be in demand in person. I don't mind paying an artist. But artists tell me all the time, hey man, I rap this on hard. Just because you rap, because I rap. What I mean? Just because you rap don't mean you get paid. Because as a promoter, a promoter is trying to invest, make a profit. If I see you come to the club with two folks, yeah, you might have want to showcase, but that don't tell me I need to pay you for a headline you for a show. Because if you only know, two people show up, well, I get lost. But the artist gonna still look like, hey, I need my, I need my back in. So what are some things artists can do to come on high demand, like for their presence? Brandon, you got. I'm putting it like this. You gotta relate to the people. Mostly everybody that's in high demand right now, like. No, I ain't say no. I didn't say you had to do that. I think everybody has to. Like, like for example, I put it like this. I and I can only use me for an example because I can't tell nobody else story. I can tell my own. I got in demand when I started doing. Excuse my life. When I started doing CEO shit, you know people watch. One thing that I was told when I paid for, I paid for a meeting to learn how to be the CEO. I am. I paid five hundred dollars for a sit down. What can I do to stand out? And a lot of them evil bullshit, I ain't gonna lie to you. But he did tell me one important thing. He said, Jay, I'm gonna tell you straight up. You know people watching, you 
You got an underdog story. So if you know they're watching, give them a show. So when y'all start seeing me pull up in limos, we all on the West Coast in limos. I'm out of sunroof like I'm Tupac, riding down the Vegas Strip. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all was in that women, she said. I'm for real. People thought I was tripping. But if you went back home, they look, damn, that boy, that show was high. We pulled over to the award show the first time she said, we pulled up to the uh, to the club. She said, damn, y'all ain't doing it like this. We pulled up to the radio station in the limo. Big old nice sprinter bus we caught from, and it was something simple. We caught it from the MGM Grand, rolled it down to the radio station, rolled it back. <laughs> then went to the, went to the uh, took it again to the, uh, it was basically my taxi, but it was fancy. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, back home, they looking at it like, I'm over there snapping. I'm just marketing and promoting. Y'all just tapped into the show. But it was entertaining. Then get what, we went over there, we got nominated. Won award on the West Coast. First of all, that was something that from all been to Georgia, shit, we don't even get played on the West Coast to see a motherfucker from the same. You been in the club with me. See somebody go over there, no, actually won an award, then we won two. Then we closed out the show. We did this on the West Coast. Then you gotta think, on the home front, I was doing something that wasn't nobody doing. It still wasn't getting played on the radio at home. It's cool. We weren't even nominated in the South at that time. We on the West Coast winning the award. They wouldn't even nominate me in the South. We pretty much made the South nominate us. Cause when the West started nominating us, shit, okay, we gotta tap here now. Then, on top of that, when I started doing CEO shit, so now I had to elevate my game. People started ringing out, started calling me CEO. A lot of artists done been out of town with me. I know a lot of y'all music, I'm a lot of y'all fans. Shit, a lot of artists took their first flights with me, put artists in magazines, stuff they ain't never did before. Dreadhead game with underdogs. They didn't get interviews so they want who got the flavor. Ask them, they'll tell you. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. When you start putting people in positions, start doing things that people can resonate to, okay, that look like CEO shit, that is CEO shit. Because look around and if people ain't doing it for themselves and somebody doing it for them and they ain't signed to me. That's CEO shit. How many of y'all have seen somebody that dressed up, looked like money, but they ain't got no money? <laughs> yeah. But the whole point I'm trying to make is they caught your eye, right? You looked at me like, huh, oh, you look like money. Man, that's old Ray Ray. You know Ray Ray ain't got no money. That's, yeah, but that's how you gotta do with your, your brand. You may not be where you want to be money-wise, but you move like it. You, you, you dress like it, and you carry yourself like it. You know what I'm saying? Now, like you said, don't go out there like, like, like Flock, Walker Flock said, don't go out there and buy the most expensive Gucci stuff. If you can go somewhere and get somebody to, to embroider your, your clothes, make it look like money, but you know that was a Walmart t-shirt. But they don't know that. But you dress like the part. You carry yourself like the part. And you surround yourself with people like that. You know? My wife always tells me, put yourself in a room with millionaires, learn how to be a millionaire. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Put yourself in the room. If you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You know, you need to surround yourself with the right people. You know, if, if there's a millionaire in the room, ask questions. How did you make your money? What did you do? You know, they'll tell you. Most millionaires will tell you how they be a millionaire. They ready to share the information. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn that. You know, we said this earlier. I've been on plenty of panels. I've been on panels with, with Ludacris, with Red, um, Meth Man and Red Man. I've been on, on so many different panels where they paid us to be there. So to be able to come do something like this for free, it's, it's my joy to do that. Because I don't want artists to make the same mistakes that I made coming up in the game. You know, getting stuck. They used to tell us when we were coming up, oh, a, a brand new artist, your first single, oh, you gonna get stuck. You're not gonna make no money. And it turned out to be true, you know? But you can change the game. You know, I was signed to a major label. If you're signed to an independent label, you are your own label, you gotta put in that work. You gotta make sure that you learn the business because if you wanna kill your, your, your career, don't learn the business. Let somebody else do it for you. That'll kill your career. Now, if you got somebody that's on your team that's doing it for you, they on they up on the up and up, you rub elbows with them, you learn the business right along with them, you ask questions, you look at the numbers. Let me see the contracts, you know? Let me see everything that's going down. I don't want you to just tell me what's going on, I want to see what's going on. Yeah, we walk this thing together because I think you said earlier, 50-50. You know, if a label is coming in, the label saying, I'm putting up all this money for you. The label's gonna hold you accountable, you need to hold the label accountable. Because the label's are like, you know what, I'm not paying this money for you to be out here to promote you, 
to brand you, to market you, to set up these shows and you're not showing up or you're showing up late, you're showing up high, drunk, you can't even perform, can't even stand up right, or you're showing up and you got 30 other niggas with you. That ain't working. Yep. Yep. You know what I'm saying? What they, cause they, 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 they around you like this. Or they waiting on that turn to get put on by you. You know what I'm saying? And, and everybody can't go with you where, where God is trying to take you. All right, let's, let's make that clear. Everybody can't go with you to where you, you're trying to get to. Some people you just gonna just be straight up and honest with them. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta change your circle. If you got them 30 people coming around, they already got their hands, they always got their hands out, what you gonna give them, what you can do for them. You need to you need to cut them off like cancer. They gonna hold you back. Even if you got them 30 people, I don't know she'll have a job. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they paying to get through they the show. Be contributing. They 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 paying this, I mean to help support you. You wanna support me? Come pay to get in my show. Yeah. Support you wanna see what your way. you wanna see what your future look like? And if you play the cards, you can tax right off too. Yeah. Play your cards right. I remember Jeezy doing that with the yeah. entourage, cutting them out. Yeah, shit, being a little yeah. hype. Yeah. Man, that's a text right off to it. You play your cards smart. Let me tell you. I don't know if have a job. <laughs> we did. We did a show in South Carolina some years back with Pastor Troy, and um, I think we headlined the show. And Troy came on, and when I came out to look at it, I couldn't tell which one was Troy. I know Troy, but I, I'm being funny. I couldn't tell which one was Troy because it was like 40 niggas on stage. And he didn't even have a mic. Somebody else had the mic. <laughs> so I'm like, whoa, you know, uh, is this whole group getting, getting paid or is it just him? Because a lot of times when you're running with your whole crew, you get paid, a lot of them probably stay with their hands out. And if you don't pay them, they're upset with you, they're mad with you, they're talking about you. And you got to be careful because I learned this. Everybody ain't your friend. Everybody's not your friend. Everybody that pats you on your back don't mean you well. Okay? They may be down with you because they see you on your way up somewhere, but along the way, people, you're gonna have to start cutting people off. And they're gonna talk about you, they're gonna be mad at you, it's all good. This is your career, as I told you earlier. This is your craft, your career. Did they help you write that song? Did they put in the blood, sweat, and tears that you put in to get to where you are? You know, not turning your back on people, but you gotta let people know, this is as far as you go. Now don't go, don't go cut your mom and grandma. And nah, nah. <laughs> don't, don't say we told you to do that. Yeah. I can't stand no phone calls. Did you, told my Did you tell him <laughs> you told my boy to beat me? <laughs> hey, but in some cases, you might have to cut, cut mom and dad off. It just depends. You know, but, but you figure that out for yourself. You guys, you guys, yeah, you be able to tell. You guys know how many people roll with the clan. Like, they roll deep. And Mook, 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 Mook barely give us. Right, they, they do, but Mook barely give give the staff passes to get at the joint. So it's and it's good luck with them guys, you know. They can I'm telling you, they got 20, 20 plus people each. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it, it can get hectic sometimes. Now it's different if you got twenty plus and they all contributing, they all bring something to the table. That's the difference. But even with the events and stuff, like getting passes as an artist and say you want passes for somebody to come to the event, you still pay for that. Yeah. Last year on the tour when we did the New York State of Mind tour, mm -hmm. everybody was trying to get passes and they were trying to figure out why we were being stingy with it because it was a hundred and something, hundred and seventy-five dollars a pop that came out of their budget, their expense. So that cut into their profit. So you have to really pay attention to all of that and be mindful of that and how many people you want to roll with you for free to. You know what they say? Well, you know, you go, because I'm, I'm going to ask a whole other thing. But you know what they say? You never know who your real friends is until you lose your car, lose your job, oh, yeah. go to jail. Oh, yeah. True. 
Who gonna be with you then? You can call him that one What? Okay, so my question, I really wanted to get you while you had the mic in your hand because my question really was for you. So, um, and it's, it's, no, yeah, for you. I'm trying to get you talking. Okay. So, um, so for women in this industry, so I'm not necessarily, I, I'm not, I, I can't rap, I can't sing, I'm not with myself, child. I don't want to be no artist. But I do want to work with them. I want to host, I want to do different things of that nature. So how do you move in this industry to get that. Cause it's not that's not no job you can find on Indeed on LinkedIn. You get pit bull, I'm gonna tell you that all the time. <laughs> you get pit bulls. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make you talk too. <laughs> I don't even know why you know what I'm saying. Sometimes, sometimes because I bite it, them that's why I want them to like, speak. I speak all the time. Sometimes she'll, she'll, she'll sit up here and she'll be like, I'll be like, look, I don't feel like talking to this artist right now. I, I just can't handle it right now. She'll be like, give them to me. I said, no, because if I give them to you, I won't see them again. <laughs> a lot of that comes with your networking. These different, the opportunity versus the name. Pay attention to those opportunities. But also stay true to yourself, especially as a woman. Mm -hmm. Because you will get tried. They're yep. going to try to sleep with you or anything first as a woman. And that's not being funny. That's actually a fact. Mm -hmm. They're going to try you to see if you're one of those that, oh, okay, they're just going to sleep around and don't, are not really about what they say they're about. So always stay true to yourself. Always. But it's, it's going to start with the opportunity, especially when it comes to hosting and things of that nature. It's those opportunities. You're going to yep. get around the right people, your mentors, other people that are doing it, what you want to do. You want to get into that circle. Like they said, if you're the smartest one, you're in the wrong circle, but you want to get into that circle of what you want to do. And Good. never feed into the, the lies that people will tell you, I can get you there, I can take you there. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, they never show you anything, they never produce anything. Yeah, so when it comes down to that, okay, because hmm, I tried to dibble and dabble in that, and I didn't have people try to get me to be like their assistant or their manager and stuff, and try to pay me in like weed, or... <laughs> 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 you did a quarter ounce of work. It is a bottle of Patron. I'm gonna be honest with you. They do that just like they would in their everyday life. They're trying to haggle, they're trying to get a bargain, trying to get a deal. Still don't fall for it. Stay so. true to yourself. Stay true to you. <laughs> Listen, not just be true to you. I've been in rooms, I'm pretty sure sis been in rooms too, where you almost the elephant in the room, but then it'll be a one certain girl that'll walk in the room. You thinking she's getting attention because she got this big name. That's not the case. That's never the case. She's been through. She's been through the crew. So stay true to you the whole time, no matter what. I don't care what this person say. Be you research before you go. Cause I've been seeing, I see it all the time, and I sit back and laugh. I'm, I like literally, I'm a part of a crew that I can literally look at the chat and say, "Oh, well, I know who the hoe is." Yeah. Straight up, just like that. That's, that's true. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you know, just like she know, and she can tell, so can everybody else. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yep. And all yeah. So they were treated. Yeah. They call it industry. Yep. Oh. I'm going to piggyback off <laughs> of what she said, though. But a lot of people didn't know, before I became the CEO of music, before I even got back into music, I had my own radio show first, then I went to TV. I broke a lot of artists' music. And the only reason why I broke, I went into radio and TV, because at the time, in 2018, when I started, an artist in the city to get paid on the, get played on the radio, if you weren't paying the DJ, they were not playing you. Yep. Okay, so I understand what you're saying. Since he did touch on that, because that leads into what they call the payroll yeah, and everything. Yeah. When you're dealing with radio stations and everything and you're in business, you're not doing that. You're going to get your advertising space. You're going to purchase yes. your airtime. You're going to. There's, so yep. there's a difference. There's a complete difference. Yeah. 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 So I've done a. So I started off in radio, right? And I was yeah. a music director for Albany State. Cool. So my problem with there, we wasn't charging nobody. I couldn't get nobody to send me their music. Like I that that night the Dreadhead Gang won. Mm -hmm. I was that little shy person that was up there like, can y'all please email me your stuff so this lady stop yelling at me? Like Oh man. Oh I'ma I'm gonna put it to you like this. I didn't have that issue. Um when we did radio, I had a purpose though. The purpose for when I started radio was to have an outlet for all the artists in the two two nine and I was in Atlanta. So 
And we had like the real deal, legit radio station. We was averaging like, my first show I had like worldwide because the station was kind of bigger. So we had like, I think when they ran the numbers, we did like 75,000 people the first show. But what I was doing for my partners was like, like OG Laker, I used to see him, like he was bad 